Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS on Sons of the Forest. We're going to look at the best parameter for Windows, and after that we we're going to look at the best settings inside of the games. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottlenecks. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to Control Panel, open it, go to Manage 3D Setting, and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS, uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring, uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue, but if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, we're going to start with display. First of all, resolution, make sure that, that you're playing uh, native resolution. So if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p, go with 1080p. I really recommend to play exclusive full screen. Uh, all the other parameters are causing stuttering, so don't use that. V-Sync, I just disabled my V-Sync and I put a uh, max for my max FPS, but it really depends what you want to do because I, I'm not a fan of input lag. So when you add V-Sync, you will have input lag. But in this game, honestly, it doesn't change anything. You're not like playing Valorant. Uh, and also if you have technology like G-Sync, FreeSync, uh, definitely use that if you don't like tiering when you're playing. After that, for the graphic parameter, first one is draw distance. Uh, this one is huge on your FPS. If you compare ultra low to ultra, you can have a difference of 16% in your FPS. I recommend something like medium and honestly to have like a decent experience when you're playing the game. Uh, and if you are very limited with your PC, the resources go with low. Ambient occlusion, this one also will provide you a lot of FPS if you're removing it, but I know your game will look flat. So not a huge fan of off, you can go with low and you will have like you will lose four percent of your fps but it's not bad if you compare with medium high or ultra uh for quality i recommend also <laughs> you don't have you have three different choices if you don't like your image in off go with low uh, if you compare off to high you can expect a nice six percent boost in your fps at low you will gain a nice three percent so uh, again question of preference and question like what is your goal and what is your computer and it's tropic te texture I'll, like all the people can use on over there shadow quality this one is super important if you compare ultra to ultra low you can expect 18 percent boost to like 22 depending uh so honestly my first recommendation is start with shadow quality at ultra low look at your fps because for some people it will be enough Cloud, I recommend to go with low. Uh, you just have two different parameters. As you can see, it's 4% difference, so go with low. Grass, you can easily run medium. Not a, a huge difference with low, uh, so it's like 1% difference, so definitely go with medium. Water, I recommend to go with low also. Parallax distance, something like low or medium, depending on like what's your uh, goal and again, how many FPS that you have. If you're uh, doing well, just go with medium. It will be a lot better. Uh, billboard quality, not a huge uh, impact on your FPS. So you have like three different uh, choice over there. Uh, honestly, anybody can run medium on this one. It's not that bad. And low is very bad for your image quality on the billboard. So I recommend to go with medium. Texture resolution, go with full. You can run this game easily, except maybe if you have like one gig of VRAM on your GPU. Don't go too crazy. Go with half. After that, we have a couple of features. First of all, if you have an RTX card, go with DLSS and use quality. This is the best mode. Honestly, at balance, I don't like the image quality when you're moving and stuff. Everything looks blurry, so that's why I recommend to go with quality. Uh, if you don't have DLSS, you have FSR uh, 1.0. Not a huge fan of it, honestly. Uh, I hope they're going to patch it and they're going to use the uh, 2 
1.0 version. If you don't want to use upscaling method like that, you can definitely use FXAA. Uh, it's a good compromise if you um, playing this game. TAA is taking too much resources and it looks very blurry. So that's why I recommend FXAA. If you don't mind about anti-aliasing, just put this one at off and it will help you with your FPS. So I'm going to put the LSS quality at quality like this uh, after that i recommend to just uncheck everything else bloom screen space reflection motion blur micro shadowing contact shadow and chromatic aberration you can expect a nice eight percent boost more because of the shadow things over there motion blur not a huge fan for your image visibility same thing with bloom and uh, screen space reflection will help you a lot with your fps also and the last thing is style film grain i recommend also to go with off gameplay you have the camera really important to understand more you have uh, fov uh, you're gonna lose fps so by default it's at 70 don't go too crazy if you're limited with your resources on your computer me i'm playing at 90 but again it will take a lot more resources so just start with 70 and if you're very limited like you're playing on the laptop maybe you should use 60 like this so this is pretty much it control we're good the last thing that you can change, it's over there. It's about the sound, the dynamic range. If you're very limited, like a very old CPU, I don't know, a Core 202, something like that, go at 32 for the voice count. It will help a little bit. So this is pretty much it for my Sons of the Forest guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.